If you are a developer using AI, you know that it's a game changer for boilerplate, prototyping and speeding up many tasks. But you also know the frustration. Sometimes AI gets stuck, it doesn't quite understand what you want and you have to take over and write the code yourself. Now, if you listen to the AI bros on social media, they tell you that if you are not crushing it, then you have a skill issue and you are doing it wrong. But the reality is that there is no way that AI will get it right every single time. And there are certainly cases where you should not use AI or force it into scenarios where it's not efficient. So how do you decide between prompting with agentic AI and simply firing up the IDE and writing the code yourself? Well, in this video, I want to offer a balanced perspective along with a decision matrix that will help you choose the right approach. And ultimately, this decision boils down to a simple question. And that is, which is greater, the prompting effort or the coding effort? And in my experience, the answer to this question varies on a case-by-case -case basis. For example, let's consider the kind of tasks that you might encounter when building a Flutter app. And these might include things such as text rendering issues, writing boilerplate code, and perhaps implementing pull to refresh, or writing unit and widget tests. And from time to time, you might also have to do some small or big refactors. And the list goes on with things like localization, adding a teaming system, adding offline caching, and so on. So when dealing with these kind of tasks, how can you decide when to prompt and when to code? Well, let me introduce you to this nice and simple 2x2 two two matrix. And as you can see, on the x-axis we have the effort to prompt, and on the y-axis we have the effort to code. And inside each of these quadrants, I've added some example Flutter app development tasks that show you when you should consider prompting versus coding. For example, let's consider the top left quadrant, which is about tasks that typically require a low prompting effort but a high coding effort. And inside this quadrant, we find things such as writing boilerplate code for things like crash reporting or analytics. And writing tests is also something that AI is very good at, because it can take the existing code and write tests covering all the edge cases. And localization is another good candidate, because you can ask AI to find all the hard-coded strings that are shown in the UI, and then generate the correct ARB files for multiple languages. And teaming is another good one. For example, the other day I was working on my currency converter app and I realized that I was using a lot of hard-coded colors and text styles. So I asked AI to make a plan to retrofit a teaming system in the app and it did a great job. So overall, these are all tasks that require a lot of code to be written or refactored, but they are not intrinsically hard tasks and implementing them correctly is mostly a case of pattern recognition and repetition, as well as filling in the blanks, which is something that AI is very good at. Next up, let's move to the opposite corner of the matrix, which is about high prompting effort but low coding effort. And to this quadrant belong tasks such as text rendering issues, as well as layout errors such as overflows and unbounded heights, which require explaining the exact visual issue. And we can also find one-line bug fixes, like adding a missing notify listeners, for example. And what is common about these tasks is that we need to be very specific with our prompting to get the result we want, but the amount of code that is produced is minimal. For example, if we have a layout overflow error and we want AI to fix it, we might need to explain the exact visual problem, show screenshots, and specify the desired behavior or for what might be a single line change, like wrapping a widget in an expanded widget. And alongside these kind of tasks, I've also included dense business logic, which usually requires a large set of a sentence criteria. For example, consider the binary search algorithm, which is something that can be implemented in less than 20 lines of code. But if we wanted to write a prompt to describe this algorithm, we would end up with something like this, which is far more verbose, and I would argue that this is less clear than the code itself. Now, of course, you're quite unlikely to need binary search in your daily work, but the point I'm trying to make is that when you're dealing with dense business logic, code itself has much more information density than natural language. So overall, these are all scenarios where if we already understand how to solve the problem, we might as well edit the code directly and be done with it, 
And by doing so, we can avoid the inherent ambiguity of natural language, as well as the fidelity gap that might arise when AI tries to make visual UI changes. Next up, let's move to the bottom left quadrant, which is all about low prompting effort and low coding effort. And this is where we find tasks such as small UI and animation tweaks, or adding pull to refresh to a list view, and simple refactors that we can do ourselves, or ask the AI to do with a single line prompt. And these are all tasks that are straightforward to describe and result in a small amount of code. For example, adding pull to refresh is as simple as wrapping your list view with a refresh indicator widget and adding an on refresh callback, which you can explain with a basic prompt. However, if you come across a problem that you're already familiar with, you can solve it by relying on your own muscle memory rather than switching over to AI, writing a prompt and waiting for the output. And chances are that you will trust your own code more than what the AI might produce. And by the way, I've also decided to include code gen in this quadrant. Because this typically involves making small changes to data models, such as adding a new property, and then running the code gen to update the generated code. And even though Build Runner might end up producing a lot of code, we don't really need to look at it. And we can just trust that it works because it was produced by a deterministic process. Next up, we can move to the last quadrant, which is about tasks that require a high prompting and high coding effort. And these tasks tend to be quite complex in terms of specification, planning, implementation, and verification. And they might include things such as offline caching and syncing, full stack features, background tasks with Android and iOS specific code, as well as complex charting solution, and perhaps in-app purchases and entitlements. And of course, working with AI on these tasks is rarely a one-shot prompt. Rather, it's more like an iterative process. And we can use AI agents to help us on each step of the way. And if we want to ensure success, it's important that we write very detailed and specific requirements. And this effort is essentially the cost of providing context to the AI. And it might require significant domain expertise. And without it, it's very likely that AI will miss important details and go down the wrong path. And we should also break down the complex problem into smaller, manageable sub-problems that AI can tackle individually. As part of this, we should ensure that the code is maintainable by following the project's standards and conventions. And verification is also very important, and is often the most complex part of the process. And it's worth noting that it can be particularly hard to debug AI-generated code, because we are not written it ourselves, and we might have missed some subtle errors. So overall, the tasks listed here have a high cost of failure. And while AI can help us along the way, we still need to be very careful about how we use it and have the right guardrails in place. Okay, so let's zoom out and do a quick summary. And as we have seen, before we start coding with AI, we always need to consider if the coding effort or the prompting effort is going to be bigger. And as you can see from the examples in this matrix, the answer to this question varies on a case-by-case -case basis. And when deciding how to approach a particular problem, we should also consider the cognitive load. And what I mean by that is that a short but effective prompt might require some background research and some significant mental effort to formulate precisely. Likewise, a one-line code change might require a lot of cognitive load if it's in a complex and familiar system. And in this scenario, AI can help us understand the system better and pinpoint the correct code change. And by the way, there is one more thing that I'd like to point out. And that is that depending on the amount of code that we need to produce, we can use different tools. For example, if we only need to modify a few lines of code, we can lean on autocomplete and IDE assists, because these allow us to be more surgical about how we change our code. On the other hand, if we need to produce a lot of code or make big changes, then agentic AI workflows start to make more sense, and AI can do a lot more of the heavy lifting by writing plans based on specifications and implementing the code for us, while our job is to come up with good specifications and verify the results. And overall, I think this is a good mindset for how to think about coding with AI in 2025. So what does this all mean for you as a developer? Well, chances are that these 2x2 two two metrics will look different in the future as AI tools continue to evolve. And what's high prompt today might become low prompt tomorrow. In fact, I've seen this firsthand and most of my coding is now done by AI agents, which is something that I wouldn't have dreamed of just a few years ago. However, I do believe that AI gives us knowledge and speed, but accuracy is not guaranteed. 
And there will be always moments when your insights, muscle memory and direct coding and debugging skills are indispensable. After all, those are the very things that make you valuable as a developer in this industry. So I hope that this video has helped you. And as you continue in your coding journey, keep in mind that AI is a powerful but limited tool and there are always trade-offs to consider. And I hope that being selective between full agentic AI mode and autocomplete mode, you'll be able to get the results you want more quickly without getting frustrated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.